How has Minnesota Wild prospect Brock Faber been doing so far this season for the Gophers? And what have been the biggest keys to success for Gopher hockey so far this year? We discuss today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome into yet another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is available on your favorite podcast platforms for absolutely no charge. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, Dylan Laux joins us to talk gopher hockey as we discuss Brock Faber and uh, what he has been doing so far this season as well as some of the biggest reasons that the Gopher hockey team is up near the top of the standings as well. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And as mentioned, we are joined today by Gopher hockey analyst and reporter for Gopher Hole, Dylan Laux. Dylan, thank you for taking the time to join me here today. Uh, exciting year so far for the uh, the Gopher men's hockey team, to say the least. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's they've been off to a pretty good start, a couple ups and downs, but that's what happens with a young team. So it's been pretty exciting so far. Well, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth here in a bit. But wanted to just start by talking about uh, a player that I'm sure a lot of Wild fans are trying to keep some tabs on. That of course being uh, defenseman Brock Faber. Uh, how has the season been going for Brock so far here this year? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been going good for him. You know, he's got a C on his chest this year, and he's kind of taking that and run with it. I know there's a lot of guys in in that locker room who look up to him and listen to a lot of things he said. Um, there's been a lot of times this year, kind of as I said before, it's a it's a young team, so there's lots of up and ups and downs. But they definitely look at him to you know help them get through those. And there was a time against Penn State on Thursday where they lost four two. Super sloppy game, really bad first period, just not good hockey throughout the entire game. And, you know, he came, in, he came into the press conference afterwards and, you know, said some things. And he's, he's a leader. Like, he, he tells young guys what they did wrong, what they need to do better at. Um, he takes, takes a lot of pride in wearing that C, and he does a great job of it. You know, there, in that first period of that game, he, he comes in over – over the line and, and makes a play and gets bumped off the puck. They, they go down and score. And he was very quick to say, like, you know, we all made mistakes. There's things I need to be better at. There's things this team needs to be better at. And it was a, it was a good game to look at themselves in the mirror. And he's just a great leader, but he's just so good defensively too. He, he takes a lot of pride in that game. And this year he's, he's bringing some offense too. So he's off to a good start. That's for sure. Yeah, it, it's been uh, it's been fun to see him kind of put the uh, the entire package together. Um, you talk about the leadership aspects, you know, some of the the tenacity as well. Um, it's hard to not see what Faber is uh, is doing at this point and think that uh, that his game definitely is going to translate to him being uh, a successful defenseman uh, in the NHL when he gets there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I talked to him last year about halfway through the season on the article I did for the uh, Minnesota Hockey Mag or Hockey Journal. I asked him like, how like why does he pride his game in defense? Like, where did that kind of come from? And and he just touched on like when when he had his time for the U.S. National Development Team, he took a lot of time after practices and games to sit down with coaching and watch film of other defensemen and. He prides himself in, in his defensive game. He looks on film of McAvoy. Um, I know he just recently said he loves watching Jonas Bardeen, Jared Spurgeon. Those are the kind of things you look at. Like currently on the team, he leads the team in defensive zone retrievals. Like he knows where to go without the puck, and he definitely knows where to go with the puck. And I think that's the kind of stuff that translates. He's he's very he's a smooth skater. There's not any, you know, chippiness or, or choppiness in the way, you know. He skates. He's first on the team in takeaways. He forces you to the outside. He's got a great stick. And again, he's just a great leader. So there, there's a lot to look at that you will think will translate to the next level. And uh, I know a lot of people 
probably don't think there's that offensive potential, but I do think there's a little bit in him and maybe some some untapped offensive potential as well. What would you think for a timetable for Faber after this year? I would imagine he may end up uh, going to Iowa to kind of start there. Or what is kind of a logical timetable for him to get to the NHL at some point? I would, yeah, I agree with you there. Um, do you think once the go for season's over, he might sign? Um, you could, he could get some time right away, but you know, with all the defense from the wild have right now, it might be a little bit harder, but you know, maybe say next year you're without Matt Dumba, maybe, you know, you make a trade elsewhere as well. He, he might slide in there, but I think to be a, a full NHL or like maybe a, a 60 game season, 80 game season, whatever, maybe one or two years. I definitely think, you know, he, he might need a little bit of seasoning in Iowa, kind of like what the Wild did with Boldy, you know, just to get that professional professional hockey like under their belt. Because um, Boldy played a couple of years of college hockey and then obviously some time in Iowa, but look at him now. And I, I think defense, you know, it's a little bit different. It obviously took Kalen Addison a long time to get get where he's at, but I think there's a lot of a lot, there's a lot of positive things in Faber's game that you look at and you say, I, I think I think this stuff is NHL ready. So probably one or two years to be like a a full sixty game NHLer, but he's he's pretty dang close. Well, that's uh, that's certainly good to hear. Now we'll uh, we'll shift our focus to talking a little bit more about the uh, the men's hockey team because. It's crazy to me that you can have a team with a player such as Logan Cooley, who obviously a lot of people around the country know, and there are players on the team that are doing better than him performance-wise. So we'll, we'll talk about that as we continue our chat here on Lockdown Wild after this. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. They are your number one source for sports betting info plus stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, they've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at betonline.net as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action at BetOnline where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wilds, once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wilds your first listen each and every day. Seth Topol joined by Dylan Lokes talking go for men's hockey. Dylan, the uh, men's team is having a pretty good season so far, uh, although they did have uh, a disappointing loss to Penn State, as you referenced. Who have been some of the players that have stood out the most? Let's just start on the offensive end. Yeah, I mean, obviously... You know, Jimmy Snuggerud for him to just come in so quick and just start scoring goals in a bunch is is definitely exciting. And I I wouldn't say it's much of a surprise just because everyone knows how much of a goal scorer he is. But, you know, the continued success success of Matthew Knives, um, I think Mason Nevers is taking a real good jump. Um, I think Huglin's taking a jump despite only having one goal. I I think there's going to be a, you know, a stretch of five games where he might, you know, put up four or five goals in that stretch. He's just he's just so good with and without the puck. I think Jackson Nelson's taking a big stride. You know, this is a guy who a senior this year, you know, gets an A on his jersey from a small town. He he's taken, you know, quite quite the journey and path to get here. And this is a guy that's probably gonna have a couple of uh offers from NHL teams once the season's season's over. But then obviously, you know, Cooley has started pretty I mean pretty average, I guess, from what some people may say. But, you know, I know Motsko and the coaching staff and the team and the players, they, they always joke that they keep telling them that you're going to go on a run where you're just going to, you know, keep filling the net with goals. And Cooley laughs and kind of doesn't believe it. But, you know, he's a third overall pick and that stuff's going to come really soon. He's just got to get, you know, a hold of college hockey. But Is it a team more built on scoring or on uh, defending well and, uh, and getting strong goaltending too? I think it's a little of both. Like, if you look at the top six, obviously the first line is is some of the one of the best probably in college hockey. I mean, it's it's knives, it's Cooley, it's Snuggerud, it's all offense. But you know, they stick up for themselves. Like Cooley, actually, believe it or not, leads the team in hits. So he's physical. He's not going to let guys get under his skin. 
Um, but then you, you you look at the bottom six guys like Nelson. I know he's kind of getting second line minutes, but you know even the fourth line like Strobel and Middlestead when they get in there, like they provide sparks, they provide defense, they provide physicality. But then you look at the back end. I mean, it's one of the best decors probably in the country, really. I mean, you got all those superstar defenders, and Justin Close has been Justin Close. I mean, he's continues to just play unbelievable hockey day in and day out. It, I wouldn't say it's a shock at this point. You know, he did it last year, and now he just keeps on doing it. I will say it's a little of both. Um, when you get good offense day in and day out, defense is always looking good too. Um, but they also have got guys in the in the bottom six that, that can put up points, can put up offense. So it, it's a good mix. A lot of young guys, though, so it takes time. Yeah, and you mentioned um... – with such a young team, obviously you want to try to avoid situations like the game against Penn State as much as possible. But at this point in the season, was that a little bit of a needed kind of a maybe not a wake up call, but just a reminder to this team of what they need to do consistently in order to win uh, throughout the rest of the year? For sure. I mean, if you look at the series just before Penn State, Notre Dame, like they didn't even allow a single goal and it was all offense like all lines contributing, all lines getting chances. Then they open against Penn State. And it was first period of the first game. Penn State already had three shots in like the first 25 seconds. Like that's just something they would see in maybe a, a period against Notre Dame. So those young guys like getting a hold of college hockey, it's going to take some time. And once you get after January, it's like you're you're playing division play you're playing big games big teams and they they kind of started a lot of big teams started the year i mean minnesota state north dakota but the series was definitely something they needed you know to come out and have kind of a sloppy game one listen to some of the leaders step up and have a great game two that's needed and you know Motsko said like sure you can go out and blow everyone out eight nothing but Games like this where you lose 4-2 against Penn State, an offensive team, like young guys need that because they're all offensive. And when when you get shut down offensively, it's frustrating. Yeah, it, it's frustrating, especially when you play that kind of team. But this is the hockey they need to play, you know, come towards the end of the season. Uh, let's take a look as we finish by uh, just looking at some of the other standings as well, some of the teams that the uh, Gophers will need to uh, be fighting it out against in the Big Ten. We'll finish our chat with Dylan Laux as we continue today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. Today's episode also brought to you by Simply Safe. And if you've thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you're going to want to listen to this. Right now, Lockdown Wild listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, so don't miss out. Whether you are a first-time homeowner looking to give yourself great peace of mind or a long-time homeowner that is looking to up your security, Simply Safe can do that for you. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report for a third year in a row. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that a threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. You can get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait or you will miss out. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe. Like Simply Safe. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wilds. Once again, thanks for making Lockdown Wilds your first listen each and every day. Seth Topol joined by Dylan Laux. And uh, Dylan, Big Ten Conference. And uh, right now, the uh, Gophers kind of in the middle of the pack, uh, trailing Michigan State and Penn State. Safe to say that those will be the two teams that they need to uh, keep an eye on here uh, throughout the rest of conference play. Yeah, I would say, you know, both Michigans, really. I, I think Michigan State has obviously been a bit of a surprise, but, you know, Michigan University is always a very, very, very good team. Um, obviously, Wisconsin, probably not. But I think, you know, going, going down the stretch, Penn State is their good team. I mean, after every single game, 
Matsko Matsko even told us like I think it was after the second game he said don't listen to those you know rankings coming out in October and November like Penn State is the number one team we're not and he he admitted that and and you know he's right Penn State is a is a fantastic team they're not they're not afraid to shoot the puck I mean they they held them off to only 23 24 shots that first game but then you know come the second they fired about 60 now only like 30 of them got on net but i think they were averaging like 42 shots per game and i i think that's that that's probably what sets them apart from other big 10 teams but obviously michigan again i mean a lot of star power star power there so those are some teams to definitely look after um in the state of minnesota is there a more shocking start to the season than what minnesota duluth is currently going through yeah <laughs> that is really weird I. I can't really put a finger on, you know, what's really going on, but yeah. It's just like, it just seems like they, for whatever reason, just can't get any traction. And then you have, you know, some of those teams that the Gophers still get a chance to see periodically, such as St. Cloud State. Um, in the NCHC, is it Denver or bust? I think so, yeah. I mean, they they just swept North Dakota, which is a good hockey team, in my opinion. I know they're rated really well, but they're a good hockey team. They're coached well. And then Denver, obviously, yeah, it, it's definitely, definitely again, another winner bust. And they've definitely got the talent. They have the right guys, um, great coaching staff, too. So they're off to a good start. And let's uh, let's just finish with a little bit of Minnesota Wild, since uh, I forgot to mention in your bio, you're also the site expert for uh, Gone Puck Wild. Um, it's been an up and down start to the season so far for the Minnesota Wild. What uh, what do you think have been the biggest issues for this team? But what and also what do you think have been uh, the biggest strengths so far? Well, strengths obviously. I... I think I think Boldy's gone off to the start that he needed to go on. I know these last couple of games maybe he struggled a little bit, but another strength is just kind of like kind of just like the depth. Like I know Shaw's kind of burst on the scene here and he's now playing really, really good hockey. You know, Connor Duar scores last night. duhame has been good. Um I think it's I think Rossi's maybe a little bit of a surprise. I think, you know, we were all kind of hoping that he would start off a, a lot better than he is. But again, you know, time more playing time, things like that, and it, and it will come. I think, you know, start of the year, there was a lot of concern with the goaltending and the defense. But, uh, you know, I just saw a couple of days ago that the Wild actually ranked about sixth in the league in uh, expected goals again. So they're doing fine defensively, and obviously Fleury's really picked up that goaltending. So they'll turn it around. I know the record's probably not what a lot of people are hoping right now, but they'll pick it up. Yeah, get get healthy, give yourself a chance right. to uh to get into the playoffs. That's really all you need. So, right. Yeah. Um, appreciate the time today, Dylan. Uh and before we go, I want to give you the opportunity to just let the listeners know where they can find your work across multiple outlets uh as you uh help keep us up to date on the uh, go for hockey team here throughout the rest of the season. Yeah. Um I would just say start with the Twitter. Um Dylan Logs 4. And uh, just keep in tab with Gopher Hole. Uh, we do more than just hockey. Now, I specifically only do hockey, but I know they've got great football coverage, basketball, things like that. And uh, thank, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it, you know, talking Gophers, talking Wild, all, all that. So, Well, that will do it for today's episode. So, uh, listeners, make sure you give Dylan a follow on Twitter. And make sure that you follow along with Lockdown Wild here throughout the rest of the season as we keep you up to date with both the Minnesota Wild and Minnesota Wild prospects as well. We're giving you new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Lockdown Sports Podcast Network.